Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back to another episode of PyTorch Community Voices. Uh, good to see everyone in the audience today. Uh, so this is a weekly live show where we uh, bring on guests from around the PyTorch community uh, for them to come on and showcase what they've built in PyTorch or uh, what they're um, using PyTorch for. Uh, so I am your host today. I am Jessica Lin. I am a developer advocate uh, here at Facebook, focused on our AI and ML open source projects. Um, and with us today, uh, I have a very special guest, um, Victor from PyTorch Ignite. Uh, so for a quick overview of those watch for those watching, um, PyTorch Ignite is a high-level library uh, focused on helping us train and evaluate neural networks um, in PyTorch uh, in a easy and flexible, uh, transparent way. Um, it does so by creating modular components um, with uh, capabilities to surface metrics um, and help with distributed uh, distributed training um, and and much more. So let me uh, bring Victor on and have him uh, explain it uh, to the folks in the audience. Hey, Victor. Uh, thanks. Hi, thanks, Jessica. And yeah, so glad to be here in this episode. And right, so I'll be talking about uh, PyTorch Ignite here, which is uh, our uh, open source and community driven project. And yeah, so as for myself, probably if I like yeah, to, give it a little intro about yourself. Yeah, exactly. So um, I'm a software engineer working at Quantsite. Um, daily, I'm work on PyTorch and some its uh, ecosystem projects like Torch Vision and PyTorch Ignite. And here I will talk uh, about mm. uh, PyTorch Ignite, uh, okay. which I'm maintaining with a team of other members, uh, Sylvan and Taras. Who unfortunately couldn't be could join us uh, today for personal reason, but well, at least I could share some things uh, yeah. about Ignite here. Mm -hmm. Well, glad, glad to have uh, at least one one of the folks on the team. Um, so, uh, actually, wanted to ask. So, you mentioned you work on Torch Vision. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So, are you more of a computer vision focus? Yeah, exactly. Oh, like okay. Computer nice. vision guy. Yeah, and I had also background on actually as a deep learning um, engineer and specialized mm. in image uh, processing and satellite image processing, especially. Okay, got it. Um, yeah, so then for those of you watching, uh, the format of the show usually goes: so the presenter will do a presentation on on um, so Victor will do a presentation on PyTorch Ignite. Um, that'll be about 15, 20 minutes. Um, and through that time, if you're watching, we highly encourage you to please ask questions in the audience. Uh, we have an expert on the topic here. So um, he's here to answer your, any of your questions about, about the project. Um, also, if you do use the project, yeah, please comment about that um, in the comments. We'd love to hear how you're using it, um, if you have any questions you know, about using it. Um, and then after that, after the presentation, we'll go through all your questions, uh, do a live Q&A uh, with Victor. Does that sound good? Great. All right. How about you'll pull up the slides? I'll add that onto the stream. Yep. Oops. I'll turn my make sure my notification all my notifications stop sounding. And then, oh, is it? Um, it looks like it's showing a, a dark screen right now. Yeah, I'm also. Oh, I'm restarting. Okay. Start again. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Sorry about that. Guess what? Yeah, no worries. And I guess while you're sharing, we see a couple of folks in the audience out there. So hello, Pritam. Hello, Jose. Uh, thanks for joining us. And then also, hey, I don't know if you're Canadian, but hello. All right. And we got the presentation. All right. With that, I will step back and let you have the stage. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Great. Um, so uh, here I will talk about this uh, project PyTorch Ignite, which is, as Jessica said, so it's a tool uh, to help with training and evaluating neural networks. Um, and for those who would like to follow the slides later on, so they are available on this URL. Um, so the content of this presentation, I'll talk about roughly these four topics. Uh, so what it is PyTorch Ignite and for which purpose it's designed and how it is designed, especially. Um, <clears throat> quick start example as well, then uh, a short part uh, showing how to convert pure uh, PyTorch code to PyTorch plus Ignite. And finally, I'll talk about the project itself, uh, how, it's, uh, how it's maintained and uh, 
especially what happens around it. Right. Um, yeah, so for those who is unfamiliar with the project, so it's a Python library uh, helping uh, to train and evaluate neural networks in PyTorch and what we say the flexible and transparent way. So it's an open source project, can be found on the GitHub, on PyTorch group, Ignite. And um, uh, what makes it unique, uh, especially compared to other libraries uh, in the same sector? So uh, the unique design here is about uh, that we uh, provide uh, the components that user can use to build their unique uh, training pipeline. And so in this case, actually think about library versus framework approach. So uh, in framework approach, you have a already prepared structure for you and just you fill some holes there. And this can be, this can work nice, but in case if you have some limitation due to your use case, right? <clears throat> On the other hand, library provides the bricks and you have to build by yourself actually this structure. And while building it, uh, user can actually leverage all these limitations, which can be encoded with, for example, in, <clears throat> on the other hand, framework wasn't designed appropriately for this case. Um, the second point is about, uh, we strive actually to keep our code simple and understandable. Uh, that way uh, we prefer more integrations in the way that uh, different toolkits could be just used as it is, uh, as they are uh, together, if they are appropriately designed for. So that way we shouldn't patch uh, like different ways our model to make it uh, to make it work with some other things uh, like accelerators or frameworks and the third point is also which is important for me and the team and this is our community involvement in open source and I'll talk about this later in the end but it's about like actually how we uh, so everyone is welcome as in all open source project to contribute to join the community, and in our case we also uh, trying to participate in programs like Google's Summer of Code, Season of Docs, and Mentor Sprint, etc. But I'll talk about this a bit later. Um, and the later latest probably <laughs> the most important question with which users and our listeners and uh, watchers can have that, how it differs from other single libraries and hopefully we have community voices by PyTorch by and you can watch uh, previous editions and make your own uh, idea actually of what are they doing and comparing and which uh, tool is more appropriate for use cases. And for example, the last week it was a great talk by Sergey Kolesnikov for, uh, about Catalyst where he compared actually our tool with his to and others one, and I recommend you to see uh, this part of the talk as well. Right, so now let's speak about PyTorch Ignite. Uh, so it it turns around uh, mainly the four concepts, uh, engine and event system, which is sort of unique design we have for the toolkit, uh, built-in metrics to easily evaluate models, built-in handlers to compose, uh, our training pipeline and the distributed training support we have. Right. So let me talk about this uh, engine and event system, uh, how it works and what what's the design it is about. So <clears throat> there is a simple object we call engine, which does uh, basically the two things. They just have two loops inside it, iterates over the data, over epochs, and executes some arbitrary user function on the batches like this. And engine work with event system, which is uh, a customizable event collection and, and we can trigger handlers attached to these events. For example, in this simplest form, it will be, uh, can be presented like that. So for, for example, engine will schedule uh, this uh, run, these things, actually these two loops and once we encounter the event, for example, for training started, epoch started, iteration started, so all the handlers attached to these events are executed, and that way we can interact with the engine and gives uh, a lot of flexibility. Right, so, and all these back together, so it gives <clears throat> a simplified training and validation loop. 
So no more coding for for and while loops, and we just instantiate engine and uh, run it. Oh, pause. So, hey, Victor, um, are you sorry. scrolling through the slides right now? Yeah. We're, oh, we're not seeing the slide change because um, right now we see um, just the main the first slide. Oh, uh, let me share it again. Okay. Sorry about that. No worries. <laughs> Can be annoying. Uh, sorry about that. No worries. Uh, right. So, do you see uh, the content, for example? Um, it is loading right now. So let's pull it up. I think it's loading. Oh, black screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, let's try one time. Let me try it again with a full screen. Probably it will work better. Okay, so this and that. How, how about now? Okay, yeah, you see a content slide. Uh, do you want to try just scrolling a couple? Okay, for example. Okay, that. yeah, that looks good. Okay, so it was well, okay. while sharing the. <laughs> oh, is it just sharing? No. Yeah, it was my window probably blocked somehow. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> All right, thanks. Right, for, anyway. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And thank you, Aditya, in the comments for calling that out too. All right, I'll let you go. Uh, th thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah, so <laughs> probably I will get back uh, from the. But yeah, so PyTorch Ignite, a high level library. So you can find it on GitHub, PyTorch. Uh, right, this URL. So I was speaking about why it's unique. Uh, right, okay, so there is a delay. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, how it differs and key concepts. Okay, right. And now we come to engine and event system. Okay, so uh, as I just told about this, uh, so engine is a uh, simple, rather simple object to loop over uh, the data, epochs, and execute batches. And we have together with engine event system, which is a customizable events collection, and which helps actually to interact with engine in a rather flexible way. And the, in the simplest way, uh, in the simplest form, we can have these uh, events plus custom if we'd like. I will talk about it later. And the important point here is that once the event is triggered, uh, it will execute attached handlers to that. And finally, so this gives uh, a bit simplified training and validation loop in the following form. Uh, <clears throat> so we have a train step where we can do some forward and backward passes for any kind of models, optimizers, criterion. And we pass this to to the engine, and this device defines a trainer. To evaluate, for example, one model like this, we can create an evaluation engine. We pass uh, to it uh, metrics, and once it is run, so we can compute uh, the metrics we uh, provided. In this case, it will be accuracy. Um, <clears throat> how to trigger the thing? So this things typically triggered in a handler. For example, here, the handler is just a function called validation. And we trigger evaluator on, on validate, validation data set. And finally, we can, for example, print metrics. And to schedule this handler, we just attach or add this handler to epoch completed uh, event. And what it does actually, one, once trainer is running, so it will execute validation function every epoch ended. And here, in the simple way, they just run the trainer on training data. And batches pass, pass to train step and, and things like that. So I'll <clears throat> give more details probably in quick start example. But <clears throat> what is cool and what is the power of this design? Let's <clears throat> let me talk about this a bit more. So the first point is that we can execute any number of functions and any kind of functions as handlers. So they can be lambda functions, simple functions, class methods, and compare this actually flexibility with uh, callbacks in general case where you have an abstract class or in uh, some inf in, yeah, interface where you have to derive from it and implement several methods. So in our case, you just 
uh, defined method and it can be used as a handler for that <clears throat> and in addition actually we can also pass uh, arguments a keyword key uh, keyword arguments as well here is the example how to <clears throat> attach events uh, handler sorry to the events to the trainer for example like as lambda function here is just a function as I said it can be class method and uh, we have also some synthetic synthetic sugar to um, uh, attach it as a decorator uh, another cool thing is um, building events filtering and stacking so it, it's about uh, the way how you can filter uh, when to execute uh, the handler so for example you have event uh, epoch completed and you'd like to run your validation every five epochs for example so you just specify this as an argument and this function run validation will be executed every five epochs instead of every epoch if you'd like to have for example another use case where you'd like to uh, combine the events for example completed and epoch uh, completed like that here's a use case imagine that you have for example another validation set which can be larger or you can use uh, you, or are you using for example some other techniques like tta and you'd like to get uh, other scores to see how variation can be uh, compensated with tta and you'd like to schedule it for example every 10 epochs and in the end of the training so it simply can be done like this if you'd like to trigger uh, some handler once during the training with a specific argument you can do it and ultimately you can actually pass an uh, event filter function your custom uh, function which will design uh, basically how frequently you'd like to for example execute this function and the function is rather basic saying just we or yes or not on uh, iteration value saying if we have to trigger or not the handler attached handler third point is about uh, custom events so if you'd like to go beyond the standard events you can define custom events for example backward started backward completed optimization step completed like that the only thing you have to do is just register it to the trainer and you can use it in any kind of functions and attach as, as well handlers as for other events and so here for example uh, we have a train step we would like to uh, trigger uh, handlers uh, for these specific events for example once uh, we'd like to uh, start the backward so we do something before um, the call the backward after the call backward and after optimizer step so this is an example how we can create customers but it can go larger right um, the second part of uh, the library is about built-in metrics so we have a large amount of metrics uh, we provide to evaluate models so for classification tasks regression computer vision tasks nlp uh, image generation evaluation like fid or is metrics um cool thing also about that and they can be easily composable such that uh, you can use arithmetic operations to create your own metric like that for example sorry like that so for example here, here we have built-in precision recall and we would like to compose f1 metric per class we we'll just write this expression mathematical expression we can also execute uh, torch uh, tensor methods on that and for example here we're computing f1 average so once it is attached to the engine and engine uh, uh, had run and then we have will have the f1 average f1 computed and the third case if you'd like to have your own metrics computation you still uh, can extend the from the basic class base class sorry uh, and have your own computation also created like that um built-in hand handlers these are helper bricks uh, which could help to uh, build your own training uh, pipeline so we're providing uh, handlers for to log um, to common almost all common uh, experiment tracking systems doing checkpoints early stopping profiling uh, parameter scheduling uh, and many more and here is an example if you would just create uh, sorry handler for checkpointing and execute it uh, and schedule it on the trainer to execute it every epoch completed 
every two epoch completed. Early stopping can be also uh, easily uh, <clears throat> added, such that we uh, stop uh, depending on the score function, where we just fetch uh, accuracy, for example. And uh, yeah, um, parameter scheduling, where it's uh, about optimizer parameter scheduling, actually not only learning rate, but other uh, parameters like momentum, beta, and other things like that, depending on the optimizer you have. And so uh, while well, once attached to the trainer, it will uh, schedule according to the program itself, uh, the parameter evaluation. Um, yeah, tensor board logger, for example, as, as I said, so we support um, almost all uh, common experiment tracking systems. So it can be done like that. So here, for example, we, uh, we just, so we created tensor board logger and uh, here we um, uh, print, uh, well print, log uh, batch loss every uh, iteration, every hundred iterations. And uh, by this command, we, uh, uh, we will schedule uh, printing, uh, sorry, printing, uh, logging metrics, all, all metrics computed by evaluator. Right. Uh, and the fourth part, as uh, I was sp speaking before, so uh, the distributed training support. Here, the idea is to have uh, the same code uh, to run across uh, all supported uh, backends. We have, so we supported native Torch distributed um, configurations and communication backends and Nickel, Glue, MPI, uh, Herwood framework, and XLA on TPU. So this code typically can can run uh, on non-distributed and distributed uh, configurations. And in addition to that, we also provide some helper methods uh, to adapt, or here actually to construct data loader, uh, aware of distributed configuration, uh, the model as well, and optimizer. All right. Um, so all this, uh, this code actually can be executed in different manners uh, when we, for example, spawn processes from the main um, script or using torch uh, utility, distributed utilities like launch, for example, or Elastic Run. We can also use Herwood Run and execute everything in Slur. And as I was already mentioning that, so we provide the helper, uh, high level helper functions to adapt a model optimizer and construct data loader, which are actually optional functions. So if you have a better idea how to, for example, wrap the model um, with something else, with your custom class, class you can just use uh, two, other, two other methods and use your own. So these things are optional and uh, in general case can, be, uh, can simplify your code as well. And in, in addition to that, we provide collective operations uh, running on all supported, on our supported backends to do all reduce operation, all gather, broadcast, and, and many more. Here is a big picture of uh, what uh, Ignite it is, being on top of uh, PyTorch. Uh, so we have engine class, events, state. We have a list of uh, handlers. Which, working, which are working with engine. We have metrics, which can work with engine or without engine. And we have a Ignite distributed submodule, uh, which actually helps to run everything in distributed context. So now let's just uh, take a look on quick start example. So how to uh, train yet another MNIST classifier, but with PyTorch Ignite. So how to install the library? It's rather simple. So pip install pytorch-ignite. If you're using Conda, so you can do it like that. Um, then typically you'll do some imports, torch import, torch vision imports for the data set, the model, transformation, data transformations, and ignite. Uh, we will use uh, helper functions to create trainer engine and evaluator engine. Uh, metrics, checkpoint, tensor board logger. So at first, uh, even using PyTorch Ignite, you will still uh, have to define uh, your data flow, model, uh, criterion, optimizer. These things won't change in our case, so 
here we set up the data flow and the model adapted to um, NIST data set, criterion and optimizer. So things are typical for any PyTorch code. Um, right now, now we can define a trainer engine. We'll use a helper function to uh, create supervised trainer where we're just training single model with single optimizer and criterion. We define metrics, accuracy metrics, uh, accuracy metric loss function, actually just to report the loss. And evaluation engine, where we just run the model on validation data and compute metrics. And also we'll attach uh, another handler to evaluator to save the best models according to the computer metrics. So um, here's an example how to uh, attach a few other uh, handlers to report the progress. So we just uh, define this uh, function where we print the epoch, current epoch, iteration, the batch loss, and this happens every uh, 100 iterations. Next we can, uh, next we schedule actually the validation. So we run uh, evaluation engine on validation data. We can, it, it will compute the metrics. Here we just define the shortcut for metrics and we here we just report them using std out um, next we can use a uh, handler model checkpoint to uh, create actually save uh, two best uh, models according to uh, the accuracy and uh, this handler actually is attached to evaluator such that we uh, uh, we have metrics computed and it, will, it can trigger uh, this handler to save two best models. And finally, uh, TensorBoard logger, as was shown in the previous slides, so just define the logger itself, the way how to uh, log uh, batch loss and all metrics for the validation. And uh, yeah, so now we can just run it. So we run it for, for, for five epochs and then STD out, we can see that um, this output and on TensorBoard, we could see uh, more uh, the curves uh, we logged. Yeah, so complete code for those interested can be found in this uh, tutorial under this URL. And um, we also have a um, side project uh, web application called uh, PyTorch Ignite Code Generator where we uh, provide uh, sort of templates for rather common tasks in computer vision, NLP, uh, GAN, and some other templates, and how it can be used. So you have, uh, you select the template um, and uh, probably configure a few things for, uh, for, for the training, uh, which kind of handlers you'd like to, uh, to have, loggers as well. Then you have on the right side, you have a file section, which will be available for you if you download it or open and collab. And the idea actually to start work on task without writing everything from scratch. So I invite you to take a look on this application and find and check if it can be helpful for in your use cases. Right, so uh, now let's take a quick overview how to translate pure PyTorch code to PyTorch Ignite. Um, well, basically here I will uh, show again the same, uh, almost the same code on the left or right side. Here on the right side or left side, sorry, you have a PyTorch code where you have um, a supervised training, single model data, training data, validation data, optimizer criterion. And we just loop over uh, this data for a certain amount of epochs. We have a training step and we occasionally uh, do checkpoints and compute uh, validate and validate the model. And so how can this be done with um, PyTorch Ignite? So the part uh, definition part will remain the same. Um, the training step can be refactored in a train step function and passed to the train trainer to the training engine. Uh, next, the validation we can Again, reuse uh, create supervised uh, evaluator, but it's not obligatory. You can, uh, if you have your own evaluation step, you can write in the same way uh, 
evaluation engine. Uh, computer metrics, you just uh, can use a built-in metrics, attach it to the evaluator, and once it is run, uh, you can compute accuracy, for example, here. Um, now we schedule actually when it happens. So uh, here in the loop, we have these uh, conditions, so we uh, translate them to similar with Ignite. So we just uh, attach run and log validation handler to the trainer and executed every number of ep epochs. Here we run a validator on the validation data, have metrics, and we'll just report them. On progress bar, uh, here we can see actually that we have a TQDM used to um, show the progress bar on epochs. So the same thing can be done uh, with PyTorch Ignite. Um, checkpointing, define a handler where we save actually the model optimizer, similar to this, plus trainer in case of PyTorch Ignite. And actually we save two uh, checkpoints. Uh, we schedule it. Uh, uh, to the, so we attach it to the trainer and we schedule it every uh, number of epochs to do this checkpointing, similar to the original code. And finally, we have, can just run. So we can see actually we reduce a bit uh, the number of lines of the code and the code becomes a bit more structured such that you refactor like train step, you refactor when you validate, how you validate, things like that. Right. Um, now I'm almost done with my presentation. So this is the last part and also important, which I would like to uh, talk about is uh, the project itself and what happens around it. So as you understand, it's a community driven open source project. We have affiliated to non-focus organization and project is maintained by uh, uh, machine learning, deep learning enthusiasts and PyTorch community. And actually it's really, I mean, it's an opportunity to, to thank uh, all these guys uh, who spend time contributing and working on the library. So thanks all, all, all our contributors. And here's a, an exhaustive list of uh, important contributors to the library. Uh, we also supported by a few companies and thanks them to, for that. Uh, so Quantum Site Labs, uh, French Institute, uh, Research Institute for Renewable Energies, a non-focus organization, AWS, so thanks them for the support. Um, um, thanks to GitHub, we can know actually who are using uh, PyTorch Ignite. Uh, um, at least we have an idea. So our users mostly are researchers and R&D engineers in industry. Uh, and uh, here we maintain an exhausted, uh, exhaustible list uh, of tools, research papers with code, um, blog articles, even books, uh, who are using, who are building with uh, PyTorch Ignite. For example, a cool toolkit, Monai, uh, which is about healthcare, deep learning uh, on for healthcare, where they build uh, workflows with Ignite. Right. Um, let me talk also about our community involvement. So. Um, as I already said, so everyone is welcome to join the community and contribute to the project. It's uh, driven by the community and by volunteers. And this year, thanks to Google and now Focus, we could uh, do uh, two summer of code, uh, participate in two summer of code programs and mentor two great students, Ahmed and Arpan. And I hope that was a great experience for them. And actually it was a great experience for us as well to mentor these guys and who could contribute a lot of things to the project. And I hope they also could learn from um, the project, how to code in Python, how to build things, how to maintain things, how to uh, communicate, how to um, interact with the community. We're also participating in Season of Docs program and working with a great tech writer Francie, who's writing for us content and tutorials. She's doing a re really great job for us as well. Uh, the last year we did a hard Hectoberfest and also will be doing this year. Um, PIDA Data Global Mentor Sprint we did uh, last year. Our community also helping us uh, to build our new website. Thanks a lot to Jeff Young, who's building these things for us. And it's a really great job he's doing. Really appreciate everyone from the team, really appreciate that. 
We also have community participated in creating this web app for code generation using PyTorch Ignite. And yeah, so stay tuned for upcoming events. And yeah, <laughs> certainly if you'd like to join our community, so everyone is welcome. We're still looking for motivated contributors to help with our project and in practice how it would work. So you can check out our GitHub, uh, we have a Discord. So please read our contributing guidelines if, it, if you're interested. Uh, we have a list of help wanted um, issues and reach out us, uh, to us on the GitHub and Discord for more, gu more guidance if you would like to ask more questions and just to communicate. Right, so uh, thanks for watching and listening this uh, my presentation and follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Dev2 and check out our website and I will be happy to answer your questions if you have, if you have them. Cool, sounds good. Thanks, Victor, for the, for the presentation. Uh, we'll leave this slide up for a little bit since it has a lot of uh, sure. good information on there. Um, and it looks like as you've been talking, there have been some good questions rolling in. Um, but to, to quickly recap, so it sounds like some, so for, so for those folks uh, who maybe joined in a bit later, um, mm -hmm. yeah, Victor has been talking about uh, PyTorch Ignite. Um, so you can think of it as, uh, well, specifically, Sophie was asking, um, Sophie Z was asking, you know, we have the PyTorch, um, PyTorch library, like why do we need PyTorch Ignite? Um, so I'll give my quick summary, but I would definitely love to hear Victor's uh, view on that. Um, so you have the kind of basic PyTorch library, which has a breadth of um, mm -hmm. breadth of use, um, but PyTorch Ignite, you can think of it as a, what they call it a high level library that um, allows folks to you know, reuse for those components of PyTorch that you have to you know, write, um, you know, just write a lot of code for, for example, repetitive code, like loops, yeah, exactly. training loops. Um, how do you do that in a way that's just easy and simple that for the for the developer or the researcher using PyTorch, they don't have to um, kind of keep rewriting those mundane uh, repetitive lines. Um, and it yeah allows, allows that information to surface easily. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear maybe from your from your mouth directly how, yeah, like yeah. why, what the purpose of it sure. was. Yeah. Yes, actually, Jessica, you, you said it right. So technically, yeah, so the idea is to uh, get rid of uh, repeated repetitions and the code that we can, for example, computer metrics is something we can, like PyTorch itself doesn't provide that, right? Uh, there are libraries and as well as um, PyTorch Ignite, which is which does it actually, this was in the very beginning, we started doing metrics. It's something uh, we're checking all the time. So there is also like, uh, this is something that can be helpful for, for, for the folks who is using some, uh, for the common task, if you'd like to have these metrics computed. Uh, handlers, for example, for early stopping, for checkpointing, the things actually already done for uh, in Ignite instead of rewriting them. And distributed also as, as it was the fourth part, actually, if you'd like to have some sort of cross backends uh, code if you can run, if you'd like to run it on single GPU, multiple GPUs, TPUs, so we can use Ignite also for that. Nice, yeah, so um, yeah, it definitely handles quite a bit. Um, so to your point about handlers, uh, so Sophie Z had a question uh, saying, uh, sorry for stepping in late, so can you explain a bit more about handlers, um, when to apply it to my neural network? Um, yeah, and there's definitely a lot of extensive documentation on it, uh, but let's just yeah, 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 do a quick verbal recap of how that fits into the whole paradigm of Ignite. Exactly. Um, handlers, actually, it's, just, it's a way actually where you can interact uh, during the training. So um, handlers basically do some other stuff, uh, not inside the neural network itself, but you can still do it actually. It, it, it's actually arbitrary function you'd like to execute during the training. So typically what we do, uh, for example, checkpointing, if you have, um, if you'd like to, just uh, checkpoint your training if you'd like to save the best models, if you'd like, for example, stop your training. Uh, so all these things actually uh, can be considered as uh, handlers, but actually it can be more fancy. For example, imagine uh, like there was a few years ago, uh, uh, I think it was FastEI blog saying like, hey, you, you can train on uh, smaller images and then you can make data loader with larger images. How we can do this in Python? So technically we'll do this by, uh, twice running the loops and somehow you'd like to change the data order. In our case, it just, you can do this uh, as a handler. So you just 
execute a handler where you just replace the data loading and everything will go the same. So you remove the handler, everything will just train with a single data. So you see, actually, you can do a lot of fancy and interesting and helpful things with handlers. OK. So let me ask some questions to make sure I'm understanding correctly. So you have the engine that has is it two, two types of objects, right? The, the training object and the evaluating objects. And then they right. have events. So they like listen for different types of events. So whether that's um, like a epoch has started um, and then they use a handler to check on that as opposed to similar to like a callback. Is that? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Of... Okay. Yeah. So then why the choice for handler versus callback? Um, it's for sake of reducing the amount of code. So uh, in terms of handler uh, callbacks, you probably have to uh, inherit from an interface or uh, you have to derive from a class, then replace uh, the necessary functions there. Here, you can just take this function and just attach it to the trainer, and it will work. Nice. So less code to write. OK, that makes sense. Also, sorry, I cannot find this um, strange ping noise that keeps coming from my computer. I thought I turned mm -hmm. off all the all the notifications that keeps ringing. Um, yeah, hopefully, that answered the, the question, Sophie, uh, if you have any any further clarification, uh, please please do ask. Um, so yeah, while that was coming in, um, we actually had Jose from earlier uh, commenting, chiming in about, seems like their their team uses it. So we, we build workflows with Ignite uh, in a more convenient way. The event-based and handler-based infrastructure is very readable and helps in modularity. So yeah, thanks for sharing that. Right. Yeah, sounds, sounds great. Thanks yeah. for the feedback. Um, let's see. So we have a couple of other questions rolling in. Um, let's see. Ishan says, can metrics from other libraries like Hugging Face metrics be directly integrated with Ignite metrics? Um, as far as I'm aware, uh, Hugging Face just assemble, uh, use other libraries, right? Um, but I think it can be possible. I mean, if you write your custom metrics, just a wrapper, actually, it would be some sort of wrapper for this library, probably. And Typically, what we do on you know, while computer metrics, so we have some internal accumulators. Actually, yeah. So probably I haven't mentioned that uh, um, uh, direct quickly. So here we are computing online metrics, right? So we have a iterative process, and each iteration we compute some values. So in our process, in our case, actually, we are sort of um, accumulating certain um, internal things in, inside the metrics, and so we have. Uh, these accumulators, we update them uh, every iteration. And finally, once we are uh, done with uh, the data set, or validation data set, for example, so we can just compute the metrics. And here it comes the, actually, the uh, formula how you compute the metric using these accumulators. Um, if a hugging phase, for example, library uh, does the same uh, process, probably we can do this, this thing. Otherwise, uh, which is we're also doing and which is probably not the best approach, in my opinion, but we actually can just store the history of uh, the prediction, for example, targets and the predictions. And once we have this uh, history of uh, these things, we can run them if, if you imagine scikit-learn, for example, a matrix. So, and we also have a record for scikit-learn matrix. So technically. Interesting. Uh, yeah, interesting question. Let's see. So. Jose has uh, has a question. So thanks for the presentation. A question: Do you think PyTorch Ignite is a suitable tool for dynamically building training workflows and pipelines based on configurations, uh, for example? A suitable tool for dynamic building. Um, I would hope so. Well, um, we know that. Uh, <clears throat> From our GitHub issue tracker, we uh, have a few guys actually doing uh, fancy <laughs> reinforcement things that, where we, they have a, a common trainer and different types of evaluation, which are scheduled actually on different uh, frequencies. And it was, I had the impression that it was a rather dynamic thing. And um, probably, probably it would make sense. But I invite Jose, uh, Jose to probably uh, write an issue and maybe describe a bit more his use case and we'll see um, if there are some blockers that we can just remove or work on that. 
Yeah. So again, another shout out for um, the, I think it was the, the previous slide that had a list of uh, just the, the, all the ways to connect uh, with your team. Um, I also found that, yeah, the GitHub, the issue, the questions tag in your, um, in your repo was quite helpful just to see specifically what types of questions people are having. Um, and then there's also, again, the Discord, GitHub that Victor had uh, pointed to. So yeah, ask questions there if that um, didn't answer the question. Um, so let's see. So Mylan said, yeah, to the point of why PyTorch Ignite. So yes, nice. I'm on the side of reducing code, manual code repetition. Um, yes, you're uh, in good <laughs> in good company there. Um, so kind of we're towards the work as we're nearing towards the end of the presentation. I just kind of want to ask some broader questions about you know what are the the future plans for Ignite kind of down the road. Um, what do you guys have planned coming up? Yeah, so we have a roadmap actually exposed in wiki, wiki of the project, and yeah, so plans is to actually maintain library as simple as we can and integrate. Try to ensure actually that we don't block other cool stuff happening uh, in PyTorch and around PyTorch uh, for accelerating things, for, um, yeah, so all those techniques with uh, uh, fancy optimizers and things like that. And yeah, for example, data pipes, I was actually curious actually how it will work and in future release of PyTorch. So yeah, so the idea is actually, yes, yeah, so make more integrations, show actually these cases are possible we do not block actually users for, to do this and ensure actually too that we are still um, not blocking them. And yeah, and a few other things actually we're also thinking about is uh, a bit of refactoring our engine such that um, uh, we could uh, dissociate the idea of events handling and uh, deep learning, this, uh, this deep learning actually took kind of loops such that actually users could create their own engines in this case and execute any kind of their own actually events in their uh, in their type. I mean, the, the form can be different in, from what I've just presented. Uh, for example, imagine uh, you have a trainer for cross validation. So technically, what you do today with Ignite is you'll still write your own, uh, for example, uh, loop for cross validation of for hyperparameters tuning. For example, if you have uh, another loop for some parameter, right? And the idea is that we could provide some. Uh, base classes such that user could create their own engine on that and trainer defined like that could just uh, integrate inside uh, a handler or in uh, in function actually this sort of train step equivalent to the train step. Oh yeah, that'd be really interesting. Um, so essentially, yeah, allowing more customization as, as, um, as things open up. Oh, that's cool. Um, and so as you, as you were talking, it says uh, Biswa Roop from uh, YouTube. Yes, yeah, just again saying great library. The whole Ignite team is doing great work. So it uh, sounds like Thanks a lot. there's um, a, a lot, lot more work. interesting things to look forward to uh, as the whole space continues to grow, as PyTorch continues to grow, as Ignite continues to grow. Um, so we are kind of nearing towards the end of time, but I do want to ask a question that we always ask our guests mm -hmm. um, as we wrap up. So. Yeah, what are you most looking forward to uh, just in the the, the AML space um, in general or in PyTorch? You know, just looking down the line, what are you excited about? Um, yeah, so <laughs> AML space probably, well, it's sort of idea actually. I'm, I'm just curious actually if in future we have the algorithm that will probably reduce uh, this energy and uh, data hungry algorithms such so that, for example, we could train ImageNet in reasonable time on a single GPU, you know, and <laughs> instead of having a rack of multiple GPU things. Um, for PyTorch, actually, I'm rather happy with the roadmap, how it works. And um, yeah, as we've mentioned, I was a bit curious of like what data, data pipes will give uh, once it is released. And for Torch Vision, uh, also, I, I hope to see you once the team will come up with a built-in uh, transformation for image segmentation detection. So technically, there is still a, you know, a small gap for this, but well, the team is working hard on that. And I think we'll, we'll do something cool on that. Yeah, a lot, a lot. Again, a lot to be excited for. Um, yeah. So 
yeah, with that, we'll kind of we're definitely towards the end of time. But do you have any um, any last last words for the audience before we wrap up? Yeah, actually, I was just wanted to thank uh, thank thank uh, actually organizer and you, Jessica, as well, and Suraj, actually, for organizing these PyTorch community voices, which is really nice things, and I really uh, liked actually what you did before with these uh, presentations, and it was really helpful to understand actually what what happens. Uh, uh, in the community, even if we have these events with the slides, so re re really nice uh, initiatives. And thanks, thanks a lot also for inviting me and uh, this possibility to broadcast a few words about our library. Yeah, we're definitely very happy to to have this platform. Um, yeah, big shout out to uh, to the PyTorch team. Um, I'm just gonna get shout, shout out some names like Helen, um, yeah. Helen, Sam, Randall. Um, I'm sure that I'm missing different people. Um, like we just left lots of people uh, put came together to put this opportunity together, um, but we're always happy to have have our guests on and uh, for the folks in the audience to we're really ex always excited to see the folks in the audience come in um, and we love the questions that you you ask the the comments that you you post about how you're using it uh, always really insightful things so um, yeah yeah it's a great initiative mm. thanks a lot yeah ha happy that it's um it's doing well for the community um yeah. so with yeah with that uh we'll wrap up but you can definitely follow victor uh he has his the pytorch ignite handle next to his name so pytorch underscore ignite um so keep keep tabs there on what the team's doing good stuff um and if you're watching on on youtube twitch facebook um make sure to hit a, a thumbs up button just to let us know that you're out there that you're watching um yeah we'd love to to see you guys more um with with each episode so with that, we'll wrap it up for today. All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye.